We're going to take you live to a uh, press conference uh, with Christine Mill, the Greens leader. She's responding to the government's uh, $500 million package for dental health. Restricted access to services and also we don't have enough personnel in terms of dentists and dental technicians as well as raising the profile, public awareness of dental issues. So this is what the Greens have been able to do because the people of Melbourne voted for Adam Bandt and because the Greens around the country achieved balance of power, we have been able to deliver this for the community and I'm delighted that that is the result of our negotiations coming into this year's budget following a down payment last year uh, where we managed to get $50 million and an advisory committee set up. Now we've had the recommendations of the advisory committee and we're finally seeing a real change in terms of dental services in Australia. Richard. Thanks, Christine. Well, as Christine said, today's a great day for those hundreds of thousands of people who are on a public waiting list and the many hundreds of thousands more who simply don't go on a waiting list because the list is just far too long. So what we've negotiated in this agreement with the government, and I have to say it's a testament to the hard work that Christine put in uh, in discussions with the Prime Minister and a really great thing to have achieved in the few short weeks that she's been the leader of the Australian Greens. What we've managed to achieve is a $350 million blitz on public dental waiting lists right across the country. Uh, that's a huge win. Uh, it's exactly what the expert panel, the Advisory Council, have recommended needs to be injected into the state public dental sector. So we've managed to achieve every cent that was recommended by the Advisory Council. We've got a further $80 million in terms of uh, training. We've got a graduate year for dentists and now for oral health therapists so that we get new graduates, new dentists, new oral health therapists working in the public dental sector, being exposed to chronic, uh, complex, uh, often chronic conditions that they wouldn't otherwise be exposed to and working in regional and remote communities as well. So it's a really tremendous workforce initiative. We've got uh, almost $80 million to bring more dentists to regional Australia. And this is a sign of just how committed we are, uh, the Greens, to regional Australia, that we have worked very hard to ensure that we get a strong commitment to getting more dentists into regional Australia. This $80 million investment will translate to about 300 new dentists working right across the country in regional areas. So that's a terrific outcome. Uh, we've managed to secure over $10.5 million in oral health promotion. So we've got to start tackling this problem uh, from the prevention lens as well as the acute care lens. And this $10.5 million will go towards coordinating a lot of the oral health prom promotion work done at a state level. It will mean that we begin to integrate our oral health promotion strategies with all the other chronic disease messages and approaches that we have, for example, with diabetes, chronic heart disease and so on. A lot of those approaches and strategies need to work together. We've got also a half a million dollars, a half a million dollars for the National Dental Foundation, a, a, an organisation that does very good work in coordinating dentists who, uh, as a community service, uh, dedicate their time on a pro bono basis to provide treatment to the most needy. In total, the package is worth over half a billion dollars and it is one of the biggest investments made in public sector dentistry in a generation. We're really pleased to be part of the outcome. We think it's a great outcome for people right across the country. It is the foundations for Denticare. So through this package, we have laid the foundations for Denticare. The training package, the workforce package, the oral health promotion and the huge waiting list splits into the public dental sector are all critical first steps for Denticare and were recommended by the expert panel that was set up as a result of the agreement with the Greens. Uh, the next step is to work with the government over the coming months to establish that national dental scheme, building on these foundations. And so today's a really significant announcement. It's the biggest transformation to the dental sector in a generation and we're well on the way to the Greens' vision of Denticare. Once again, uh, commend Christine for her work, commend the government for entering into these negotiations in good faith. I think we've together reached a terrific negotiated settlement. And of course, I thank the people of Melbourne who, uh, because they elected Adam Bant into uh, the lower house, we've managed to be in a position where we could negotiate this outcome with the government. Adam.
Thanks. <coughs> Look, I'm really thrilled to um, be here in the electorate of Melbourne um, to announce one of the biggest reforms in dental health in a generation. Um, when we, uh, the people of Melbourne, voted Greens at the last election, uh, and almost two years ago we were in a position to sit down with the Prime Minister uh, and agree to provide stability to the minority government, one of the things he said was that we wanted to see reform in the area of dental health. Um, we have so many hundreds of thousands of Australians on waiting lists to get to see uh, a dentist, and many people don't go because they can't even afford to at all. Uh, and that particularly hits people who are on low incomes. Here in my electorate of Melbourne, we have more public housing dwellings than anywhere else uh, in the country. And it's low income earners who are going to benefit the most from the package that uh, the people of Melbourne have just put onto the national stage. Uh, I'm thrilled that um, we are going to see over half a billion dollars in investment in dental health. And so we're going to start to move to the situation where going to the dentist is like um, going to the doctor, where ultimately you can use your Medicare card. But this um, first step, this blitz on uh, uh, waiting lists in the public sector is really going to benefit um, community centres like Dudagala where we are today. Um, Dudagala here does some amazing work for some of the most vulnerable people in the community. Now we're a wealthy country, um, everyone should have the right to good quality dental care. Uh, that's something that these community dental health care centres practice every day and as a result of the package that we've negotiated they've got a massive boost and it's going to be a, a, a big help to clear some of those public health waiting lists. And so on that note I might introduce uh, Kaz Healy who's the CEO of Dudagala Community Health and ask her to say a few words about the implication of this package. Thanks Adam. Come on. Uh, this investment is just a fantastic outcome for those many thousands of people who just can't afford to go to the dentist and who end up in great pain, really unwell and often in our public hospital system um, for something which is clearly preventable. This is a really great first step in acknowledging... OK, we're going to leave that uh, press conference from the, the Greens and some uh, dental health experts there in Melbourne. The Greens taking some credit for the package that was announced uh, today, $500 million, and one of the key uh, aspects of that will uh, be to clear the huge backlog of patients who are waiting for treatment on the uh, public dental list.